say holy spirit i need you say holy spirit you are my sweetest heart you are our dearest one say holy spirit take over take charge take all the glory say holy spirit give me understanding and i shall live in jesus name can i get an amen, amen. today my topic is a sentence should i tell you the topic the topic is if you love the lord you will have feelings for him <laughs> oh yeah somebody say oh yes tell somebody if you love the lord you have feelings no say they will say say feelings i'm gonna have feelings for him amen please be seated and turn to the one sitting by you do have feelings for god ask, ask another person hey, look tell them that my, mind me mind me to tell them do you have feelings for god let's go to the book of jeremiah <laughs> chapter number two yeah from verse one to seven but we are going to concentrate on verse number two jeremiah chapter two from verse one moreover the word of the lord came to gem chapel saying verse two go and cry in the years of place of glory saying that said the lord i remember you the kindness of thy youth benjamin benjamin it is in church Hallelujah. <laughs> oh yes he said i remember you the kindness of your youth some stuff tell me the kindness of your youth he said the love of thine espousals what does that mean the love of thine espousals when you went after me in the wilderness after me say when you went after me yeah when you went up in the wilderness in the land that was not soon verse 3 israel was holiness unto the lord and the first fruits of his increase all that devour him shall offend evil shall come upon them said the lord next hear ye the word of lord o house of jacob and all the families of the house of israel thus said the lord what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me god is saying that what have i done to you that you have gone far from me and i've walked after vanity and i become vain mm. he said neither said they where is the lord that brought us up out of the land of egypt they're not searching for me that led us through the wilderness through a land of deserts and of pits through a land of drought and of the shadow of death through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt you see god was describing the the 40th journey in the wilderness it was a land of pits deserts a, pl a place or places where nobody was dangerous places yet they went through the shadow of death and they were still alive god said they should be asking of me continue and i brought you into a plentiful country we are ending in verse 7 to eat the food thereof and the goodness thereof but when you entered you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination there are some of you the moment you entered the blessing you didn't have time for god anymore yeah i'll never forget my daughter christine many years ago when i saw her crying in my old office behind the old office and i said christine my daughter why are you crying oh mommy come and see your daughter christine was crying and christine said papa papa i said christine what does it tell me she said i need 80 cities for something i need to do and the 80s is that then I, I even give her 100 cities. Just last week, I asked her, Christine, how much have you saved? And she was telling me it was in the thousands. 
somebody who was looking for 80 CDs has savings in the thousands. When God begins to now bless you and to now give you a plentiful country to eat the food thereof and the goodness thereof, when you enter the blessing, you defile the land and you make what God has given you to look like an abomination, the heritage of God. But I know Christine will never do that in Jesus' name. Christine may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Some of you, the reason why you are late to church is because you have many dresses you are now choosing. You, you stand there before the dresses that who are that old mountain? Which one should I choose? Should I choose blue? Or yes, the blue CCC. Then after you have chosen, okay, I will wear red. Then you now go and stand by your shoes. You see, the, 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 the dress has made you late already. And now you are going to look at shoes. And after shoes, you now look at the watch. Then you look at the bag that will match. Then you now look at the wig that will match. You must be called a match, a match. You are always looking for what will match. <laughs> Can you give me the NLT of verse 2? Two? Two, uh, Jeremiah 2.2. Two. Yes. Praise the Lord. There are many people, the blessing. When you were a student, you loved God until you found employment after university. Oh, yes. Let's look at the NLT. Since they are not finding it, I'll read it for you. He says, I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. How you loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness. You loved me. Verse 2. They have joined the whole thing together. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. How you loved me and followed me. How you loved me and followed me. Can you say that one three times? Ready? Go. Oh, I think it can be louder. Now for the last time. Yes. How you loved me and followed me. They, they loved God and they had feelings for him. They were following after him. Wow. Love without feelings and passion is no good love yes no there are people with flat emotions expressionless yes no it's, it's, it's difficult it's not easy to love people who are emotionless expressionless are you okay yes are you not okay yes it's not easy yeah Unfortunately, apart from Gem Chapel, this is the... the, the <laughs> when you say, I love you, they'll say, thank you. I love you, me too. <laughs> hey! I love you, same here. I love you, God bless you. <laughs> marriages are in flat emotions this one is m flat marriage flat <laughs> yeah some people are simply unemotional and they have brought it to god ask somebody it looks like when it comes to god you are emotionless ask, 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 look at person it looks like hmm <laughs> You see, although it looks like a minor thing, it's a very serious thing even in marriage to marry someone who is emotionless, expressionless, nonchalant, sits on the fence. Uh, I'm telling you. Ah. It is not trivial. It is a tragedy of gangantuan and emotion in enormous proportion. Uh. 
<laughs> now I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh yes. To marry a strict and a, a, a rigid woman, a strict and a rigid man, you will not marry a person who is rigid and strict. And strict. Ah. Or who, no, who wants to marry a rigid and a strict person? Like a headmaster or a headmistress. I remember many years ago, there was one lady. The husband was entering the, the hall after work. The moment the husband entered, he said, remove your shoes. Remove your shoes before you enter the hall. A headmistress, you have married a headmistress. I don't want my carpet and my hall to be dirty. Your husband. Oh, that is not your child. <laughs> the minister for sanitation <laughs> who would like to be married to a strict and a rigid person who is of showing desire pleasure happiness joy joyfulness turn into a strict and a watchful overseer and there are many people when they come to church it's like senior man senior woman nothing move them praises will not move them prayer will not move them sometimes the pastor wants to lift even a prayer for souls but because of somebody's way, it's okay let me lift breakthrough and see even breakthrough prayer it doesn't move you breakthrough everybody will do hey i don't know you're not moved god is saying that i remember your kindness no go go back to the the king james jeremiah 2 2 he said, go and cry in the ears of Jem Chapel, Joseph, saying, that said the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth. God said, you were kind to me. I remember your kindness. But now your fathers, I don't know what I have done. God said, I don't know the iniquity I have done. We are, you see, in these meetings, we are raising extreme levels of God. God said, I remember your kindness and the love of thy espousals. It's a loaded statement too. If you want to be an extreme lover of God, you must understand this statement. It's a loaded statement. Yeah. Only an experienced counselor or somebody who has been in marriage for many years and handled many people will know that there are many couples who have lost kindness in marriage the husbands are not kind and the wives are not kind ah. i think that we should read it in the in the nlt version very well the whole the whole show or maybe the living bible look at the living bible go and shout this message to gem chapel this is in your bible he said go and shout this message to, to Jem Chapel, this is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. How you loved me and followed me. You loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness. Please, even through what? Barren wilderness. Listen, if you love the Lord, you will be like a young bride who is eager to please God or please the spouse. Everywhere the spouse is going, I want to go with you. But after 20 years, he said, go, go. If you love the Lord, you will follow him everywhere. If he takes you to the village, you will go. He said, in the wilderness, you were following me. Ah, missionaries, we should be able to send you everywhere. Now go and start a church. Where are the missionaries? That we, we should be able to say that all of maybe missionaries we are going to eastern region to we are going to plant a church there and we are going to be there for two weeks take leave then after we are there for two weeks we are going to leave two of you here to do the branch no he said i remember when you loved me dr Fua, and he said you followed me everywhere i remember when dr Fua came to church 
when she had not yet been given the title of a doctor when i'm preaching she would she be she be a cupidity a be. hey now she is a doctor she cannot even pray in tongues when i'm preaching hey i remember your your, your kindness <laughs> hey now, now 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 even when they pray at night she does not do the ashibi shibi again when i'm preaching i look at her face it's like, that's where she got the name of girl spirit now she's 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 a medical doctor i can't do ashibi shibi again hey! <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> if you love the Lord, you will follow him anywhere. Listen, if you love the Lord, you're going to have attention and devotion. Some people, even when there's worship, they are not attentive. When the, the preaching is going on, their minds are somewhere. Ask somebody, where's your mind? Where's your mind? Some boys I'm talking now, their mind is, is in their room. They are in their room now. Some people, they are watching Netflix as I'm talking in their heads. They are watching Netflix. Ask somebody, what are you watching? What are you watching? As you are preaching. Some people don't intentionally pinch their child and go out of the building. Hey! Some when preaching is going on, they will intentionally go out. And, 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 and they will say that I'm, I'm going to take fresh air. Hey, preaching comes not watching from our one thing. And yes. And yet, there are some of you, when you are in a relationship, when your beloved even cooks, and there's, the beloved knows there's salt inside. Once in a while, maybe something happens, then he, she cooks, and then you, hey, please, is the food okay? Hey, very nice. Very nice meal. But after some time, when you marry, how is the food? <laughs> See, that's why remember my, my mommy cooks every day I tell her your food is very nice <laughs> if you love the Lord you will be like a young bride who is eager to please God please your spouse you, you will follow the Lord you will love the Lord you will follow him everywhere I and mean, when you're having worship, you, you look at them and they are really not paying attention. It's like finish singing and go. And when we are, we are, we are saying lift your voice, let us worship the Lord. They say, God, my visa. Hey, we are all praying to the worship and you are talking about visa and employment. Because I'm when you are standing by them, you will be discouraged. You pray, lift your voice so much, oh, Father, we give you glory, give you glory. Then another person will stand in there, Father, my marriage. Lord, let cosmos agree and propose to me. Hey! <laughs> Hallelujah. If you love the Lord, you will serve him with your feelings. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. A louder amen on that. Amen. There, will be, there will be attention. And people, you don't give God attention. Even when you are praying, you will do WhatsApp, sir, till you finish. You are praying and you are watching Netflix. Is it ya, or Kella that you are calling? Oh, Brony. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you love the Lord, you will be like newlyweds. If you love the Lord, there will be feelings. I said there will be what? There will be what? Listen, there will be passion. There will be joy. There will be passion. When you are even worshiping, we will see the passion. No, when you are coming to church, we will see the passion. When you are even sitting down in church, we will see the passion. When you are even listening to the word, we will see the passion. 
Ah, Paul was preaching at Lystra and was a crippled man and Paul saw the passion. I was looking at me like I'm, I'm receiving something. And when, when you are preaching and we look at your face, you will stop. It's like you really want to sleep and we are preaching on top of your sleeping. Your eyes are heavy and your eyes are red. With my eyes turned red, with my face turned red, so pay. Amen. You may be sitting in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> uh. When you, you marry at first, marry fresh, you fall in love first. <laughs> you see, there is joy. There will be joy. There will be jumping. There will be shouting. There will be noise. There will be noise. There will be laughter. If there's even nothing to laugh about, you'll be laughing. As you are even sitting down in the hall, this one will look at this one, this one will smile. Say, what are you smiling about? I'm smiling about you. <laughs> when SK married and sat in his blue chair, he has a particular blue chair, looked at Dora's face and was smiling to Dora. He said, I'm very glad I've taken you from Osu to Myra. He said, from Osu to Domi to Myra. What Domi? Into Myra. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. It is time to love the Lord with feelings. If you are going to raise extreme lovers of God, we must raise lovers of God with what? Feelings. When we are doing opening prayer, you rush and come. You pray some. And whilst you are praying, you are not just standing there flat with most. You are involved and you are praying. Some people while away time out till opening prayer is over. You don't have feelings for God. You don't have feelings for God. You must have feelings for God. You see, normally I ask myself, what, 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 what was I doing before I got to this level? I was going to church early. I was part of opening prayer. I said, let me go back to it. Yes. Every time mommy will tell you that, I'll tell her, let's go, to, let's go and join opening prayer. Let's go and join. Let's go and join. Because I remember that's why God used to raise me. That's my first love. That's my first works. Am I communicating here? There are many people who opening prayer emotionless. You will do why and be late. You won't be opening prayer. Even Sunday, you will intentionally go to your souls late and be late with your souls. So you are already teaching your souls you can be late. So long as you are going for souls, you can be late. If you are going to raise extreme lovers of God, we need lovers who wake up as early as 4.35 a.m., go to their souls, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., by 9.30 or before, they have brought all their souls and they are here with them. Extreme. I said extreme. Extreme. Oh, can you, it is surprising when at first the church service on Sundays were, were 8.45. You could come at 9.15. It has been moved to 9.30. You come at 10.30. You are not an extreme lover. You don't even watch your watch. When you are, you are going to watch your souls. You don't serve God with passion, emotions, and feelings. Listen, I've been, in, I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord, working in the church. If you go early, the souls will come with you. On time. It's not something I've not done. And I still not do. Don't forget that I've started a new branch at Hebron. And the service time is 7 to 8. So how can I be late? How can I be late? I Me, mean, when I even started first service here, the first service time was 6.30 a.m. And people came. 6.30 a.m. I started first service in this church. 6.30 a.m. And I will not be, me, I'll be here by 6 a.m. Yes. So now that people have come and I'm now come. No, 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 no. I'm there. I am around. I am available. You serve God. There must be some passion. The members must see passion in you. Steward, the members must see passion. Some of you do the work of God passionless. 
You have been backing, I mean, a lead vocalist. When we see the backers, sometimes emotionless, flat, passionless. When you are playing keyboard, playing organ, playing drum, playing what, it must be with passion. When you are leading a song, passion. When you are preaching, passion. When you are going on evangelism, there must be passion. When we finish opening prayer, it is passion. Listen, if you don't have money, I can accommodate you. But if you, are, if you lack passion, I can't contain you. If you lack passion, you must have passion. You must love the Lord. If you love the Lord, you will love him with your feelings. Imagine a footballer who is not playing with passion. He will pay you to go and play for us and you come back home without a cap. Didn't you see how Ghana was playing during the Afcon? When you have scored, what, what team was that? The one they scored 2-0 and the people, what team was that? Egypt or Mozambique? The 2-0 was Mozambique. 2-0, 89th or whatever minute. 80 what, or 90th minute, extra time. And they can score you. Even, even if you look at the way they were being played, no passion. When they have the ball and they pass to the opponent, you see that there's an opponent. This is a Mozambique person. They, they, they does not look like they did. Or this one does not, that you pass the ball to. The ball is even going to throw. That you, 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 you're going to go, what, what do we call it? Go kick. Then you say that, no, no, no. I must give the opponents a corner. Why am I giving out them? Go, go. Then you say, we don't like this go kick. Hey, corner. Boom. Then they will play and score us. You see, when Ghana scored two, in Ghana, when we score, we want the people to come and score us. We don't pursue more goals again. So there's so many Christians, the moment they get money, they get building, they get car, they get this, they don't pursue God again. It's like, I'm okay. Oh, so that was why you were serving God. You were serving God for money and for car and for visa. Your life is not nice at all. Your, life is, your, your love is dependent upon physical things. No passion. Like Ghana football players. Your love for God is like Ghana football players. The way you love God, you look like Ghana football players. Yeah. God will give you 2,000 CDs. 5,000 CDs. <laughs> oh, please, are you coming to church? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not coming to church. Why? You have 5,000 CDs. You have 10,000. Because of 10,000. Anyway, they have $1 million. I have a name. sorry. Ask somebody, ask people, do you have feelings? Do you have feelings after God? Do you have feelings? You see, the way you are even asking, there's no passion, there's no feeling. Shake the person and say, Do you have feelings? Feelings for God. Many Christians don't have feelings for God. When they are even singing, you can see that this is passionless. All we've known is your voice. And that's not been a feeble under all because Lord, you are there, shepherd. Mm. Hey. Oh, somebody with passion. All we've known is your voice, and there's not been a feeble one through the years, all because Lord, you are dearest shepherd. Hallelujah. It's the feeling of the Brigadier. Passion. When she heard I was singing, she ran to come and shake my hand. Say, I like the passion. Yes. See, owner of heaven and earth, you brought us here on earth to worship you forever. Please give me my key, D Sharp or F, one of them. Amen. But when somebody has passion, they sing and cry. They have emotions. Feelings they inside. Honor of heaven and earth. You brought us here on Jesus. Somebody put something on, on her status. And I love the way the woman was singing. Even she was getting it wrong. She wanted to sing El Shaddai, El Shaddai. But she said, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. <laughs> but the passion 
with which she was even singing it, God was even happy. You, you know the words. You know the English. You know, but, but there's no passion in your singing. You know as I'm teaching, the way you are even receiving, there's no, you are just sitting like you are in your sofa. Ah. Please be seated, praise the Lord. No passion. You always want to rest. You always want to take it easy. You always don't want to stretch. You always want to play tired on God. That's when you marry and you play tired on your wife and tired on your husband. No kindness, no feelings, no passion. If you're going to raise extreme lovers of God, people with feelings, they are for feelings for God. <laughs> David said, my soul follows hard after you. Follows hard. My deep is evash. Follows hard. If you love the Lord, you have to serve him with your feelings. He said, I remember your kindness. You know, some people are not kind to the church. Some people are not kind to God. I was, I was asking mommy before the service that are people, what, what is kindness to the church? And she was telling me that people are not kind. I said, it's true. Because in these last days, when maybe something doesn't go on well in a local church, that is when we talk about a local church, the church you belong to. A local church is not a church that is they speak to you, no. A local church is a church that you belong to. A local assembly. Amen and amen. Are, are, you, are you hearing me? And maybe something happens and it didn't go in your favor. You didn't like it. Do you know that if you love the Lord, you handle it nicely. You go to the person. You talk nicely. You solve it. You pray. Then you let go. Then you are enjoying. But in these last days, when people are hurt in the church, they live harshly. And some of them go to Facebook and disgrace the church without being kind to the church. They are not kind. God said, I remember your kindness. If people don't consider the church, they don't even consider the effect that it will have on somebody's faith. A lesser person, the effect it will have on their faith. Because of social media, people are playing the fool. Oh, yes. Who can come? I hate my pastor. Yes. That church is a cult. Yes, people come on social media. I hate my pastor's wife. I hate my music director. I hate um, my media head. I hate my protocol head. He always wants us to wear suit. And me too, I don't have money to buy suit. That's why I, mean, I don't like the choir. Every time you are sewing a dress. Have I told you I want a new dress to wear? People are not kind to the church. Now, people who spill rubbish against the church that they belong to, or they spill rubbish against Christianity, why they are still Christians? And yet, people of the other religion will never do Have you seen the people that are doing that? You will not see it. It's only Christians who think, well, I was not happy with what they did in the church, and I'm going to get it. I want the whole world to know that the church is stupid. The church is put. You are not being kind to the church. God said, I remember your kindness. Maybe, you see, we have raised rebels in the body of Christ. And there are fellow rebels from churches that are supporting the rebels. Oh, but we are raising extreme lovers. We are replacing the rebels with extreme lovers. Can I get your passionate amen if you are? Lovers, please be seated. Or I should close the meeting. We need extreme lovers. God said, I remember your kindness. I remember. I remember the love of your espousal. That means like a young bride. He said, you were following me in the wilderness. The word espousal comes from, you know, when you are young and they say you will marry this one. So like a young bride. The Bible said that Mary was espoused to Joseph. You see that? They will call it a siwa. You get the point. And God said that when you were a fresh young bride, he's like, whoa, everything, you were excited about it. When the person said, when I'm sleeping, I snore. He said, I like snoring, man. Yeah. After two years of marriage, he said, hey, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it. I'm going 
No, I'm closing the service. <laughs> One day, somebody and somebody was in a relationship. And the person, somebody and somebody said, the person said that, I've not seen you fluctuate before. You've not spoiled the air before. Why don't you fluctuate? Don't you spoil the air? Don't you fat? He said, We must break the fat barrier. The gentleman did not say anything. He said, Oh, oh. Then they married. And they were now in one room. <laughs> The story must be told for another day. We must wait for that. <laughs> the thing goes. <laughs> it was like an atomic bomb. The lady said, Hey, hey, my friend, why? Why? Say, but you are the one who said we should break the fat barrier. I'm closing as the way people are doing. <laughs> it is time to love the Lord with feelings. When the word is going on, be involved. When we are preaching, concentrate, respond, be excited, be happy, be, be a lover of God with feelings. With feelings. I said, with feelings. Please be seated. Every time preaching is going as if they are angry. It is time to be raised to raise extreme lovers. Extreme lovers. Oh yeah. When the worship was going on, that's when I remembered that today all that I've drank is coffee. So that's, that's all that's that's when I remembered. But you see the way I'm ministering? It's as if I'm eating. Because when it's about the things of God, when it's about God and the things of God, you see, you love him with feelings. You love him with feelings. As one of you, every time, why is that you are not lifting your hands to worship? I'm tired. Why is that you are not, I mean, shouting? I'm tired. Why is that there is no, I'm tired. Why is that, I'm tired. Listen, dignity is not a fruit of the spirit. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Joy. Joyful about God. Don't think that when you are sitting down there like a senior man, senior woman, it's, it's, it's the, the Lord likes it. No. The 24 elders, they lie down, they cast their crown down. You see, they, they are not sitting in their throne dignified. They do things to show that God, we are excited about your presence. We are excited about your worship. We are excited about you. We will do anything for your song, for your worship, in your presence. We will do anything. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Imagine outside, they told him he was glad. How much more when he comes inside? Can dance and his dress is removing. Please be seated. Listen, some people, they think that when they are joyful, whoa, whoa, they think that it's a sign of weakness. That looks like my, 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 PhD student, Miss Ghana, Mr. Ghana, pa, that I am crying during worship, that I am shouting during praise. Me, pa, rich man like me, big man like me. Listen, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is no weakness, it is strength. Can I take that again? I said, joy before the Lord is not what? Weakness is strength. It's not a sign of weakness. 
It's a sign of strength. Sign of strength. If you love the Lord, you will love him with your with your uh-huh, with your with your yeah. So I said, number one, if you love the Lord, you will go after him. You will be kind to him. If you have not written that, write it. Number one, if you love the Lord, you will go after him. You will be kind to him. The fact that you are passionate and joyful and happy when you come to God's house or when you see things about God, it means you are a very strong person in the spirit. When we say we are going for evangelism, what must be your response? Yes, Lord. Woo! That must be your response. When we say we are about to go to camp, you say, Woo! Yeah. Yeah. You even pay early. Don't say, I'm waiting for the deadline. Then I will pay two days after the deadline so that they will know that I really didn't want to go. Or when it's t shirt, you are selling church t shirt, you say that, hey, sir. But when it is party t shirt, MPP, NDC, you are the first to buy. You even buy the hat as well and the handkerchief. And you buy the horn. Boom. Hmm. Have you written number one? What is number one? If you love the Lord, what will you do? You will go after him. You will be kind to him. You will be kind to him. Amen and amen. You will be kind to the church. Sometimes the church must do something. And you know the church needs money. You want the pastor to call you and tell you that, Oh, one from by your woo. You say, yeah. Ben, then. That's why God has blessed us also to a point that it will never come to that point. Because there are people who are kind enough, who love God, who are kind to God and kind to the church to always give. They are kind to God. He said, I remember your kindness. I remember your kindness. Yeah. There are some people, they are not kind. When God blesses them, they cannot even give to the pastor. They are not kind. They are not kind. One day, Pastor Dink was telling me he prayed for somebody. And the person got some money. The person said that when the money, before the money came, Pastor Dink prophesied to the person and said, it was, when, the person, when it comes, I'm going to give you that, I'm going to give you this. When it came, the person reduced the money and gave it. Pastor Dink said, oh, did you say that? The person said, <laughs> Some people, when maybe Pastor James prays for you, and the blessing comes, the moment the blessing comes, you see that the blessing has come by you, you run away. You won't see it for some time. When the blessing finishes, when the, the, the money finishes, then you come back. God bless you, be seated. <laughs> Temple, they are not kind. When money comes, they don't remember God. When money comes, they don't remember the church. When money comes, they don't remember their pastor. They are not kind. God said, remember your kindness. Extreme lovers are kind to God. Kind to the people of God. Kind to the church of God. These days of social media, everybody wants to say nonsense about the church. And some Christians will be there and say, this is true. No, which home does not have issues? Which home? You, your nuclear family. And there issues inside it. Look at a big church like this. And you, you know your character is not even good. So how can there not be issues? No, how can there not be issues? Even, okay, you, can you easily gather your nuclear family, your brothers, and can you easily gather them? Look at the plenty of people you have gathered. Every time you call for family meeting, some people don't come. It's not even easy to gather your small family. Look at the big church that we are gathering for the Lord. And you think that there will not be issues. As, a church, as we are even about growing, there will be more issues that will come. I can't tell you. If, you see, even if we were perfect and you joined, we are becoming perfect. Because who is your papa? So when something happens in the church, don't blow it out of proportion. Solve it amicably. Solve it coolly. Cool. 
miliki mikuu. And I, hey, did you know that my leader did not talk to me well? I will show him where the power lies. Where does power lie? The Bible says all power belongs to God. Where does power lie? Where does power lie? Be kind to the church. Be kind to the leaders. Be kind to your fellow member. Be kind. Don't go to so so social media and spill beans. Now if you come to your family and we, we want to show every nonsense in, in your family or my family to social media, well, that, well, won't Facebook be choked? Nobody can go online again. Do you think, why did the idiomatic expression come? A skeleton in the cupboard. Why? No. How and why did that idiomatic expression come? What does it mean? Who can tell me the meaning of a skeleton in the cupboard? <laughs> There's an idiomatic expression called what? A skeleton in the cupboard. <laughs> Some people th- thought that it's a real skeleton in the cupboard. Now let me Joe, Joe says that I, I Papa this one I'm very sorry I'm, I beg you I can <laughs> Papa what about you As Papa with my parking Hallelujah Papa parking A skeleton that idiomatic expression that says a skeleton in the cupboard simply means an old family secret and they don't want anybody to know it Yeah. So every family, you see that there's something inside that they don't want anybody to know. Yeah. No, even you and I, you see, or in, okay, let's, anybody, when even a person's father, not you and I, when the person's father is a drunkard, and somebody meets the person and says, you, your father is a drunkard, they begin to say, hey, why are you talking about my father like that? It's true, but don't talk about it. You see, you see, you see, you see, you see what is happening. If you also see the church as a family, you you learn to protect it. Yeah. That's why God God said that children obey your parents, or honor your father and mother. <laughs> you honor what? So when day somebody said, "Papa, but my father didn't take off me. My mother didn't take off me." God didn't say, "Honor your father and mother who took care of you." God is wise. As, as a one bit. Maybe the one pepper be poor. Said honor your father and mother. So in every family there are things, and yet nobody talks about it. They all know it, but they keep their cool. It's only in church that is like, I want to bring this to social media. One for camera and see me so. Certain things are happening in the church, in AKYZ church, and I think I must bring it to. Okay, when we bring it, what can they? What can they do? What can anybody do? What you are rather doing is you are spoiling the body of Christ. Yeah. God, extreme levels of God are kind to the church. They will protect the church. You protect, please, all those who are from other churches, protect your church. It's part of the body of Christ. Maybe that one is the hand in the body universal. In the body of Christ universal. Maybe that's the leg. Maybe your church is the ear in the body of Christ. Yeah. And as you are spoiling it, you are spoiling the ear. The eardrum is spoiling. As you are spoiling the church is the hand. You, you, are, you are making the church, the, the body of Christ, an Apache. As you are spoiling the church. Number two. If you love the Lord, you will rise and seek him. If you love the Lord, you will rise and seek him. Look, don't become part of people every time they have a problem with something in the church. If you are like that, you are turning into a witch or a wizard. Oh, you are done it by four. Are you saying? Every time that everything is going on, I don't like. Every time I go, I don't like. Every time, every time don't you don't you don't you the strain in your mind? You are building yourself for anxiety, for depression, and for heart problems. Learn to be easily entreated. 
learn to be easily entreated. Yeah. What is number two? If you love the Lord, what will you do? You will rise and skip it. Never you are, you are concentrating and writing. You know. Wow. Never. God bless you. Never. If you love the Lord, you will rise and seek him. Tell someone that if you love Jesus, oh, you see the passion I spoke about. You see, when I'm preaching, it's like we are passionate. But when we finish, tell somebody, if you love the Lord, you will rise and seek him. Please don't let it end with the weak old. From today, every day, passion. Every day, passion. Every day, feelings. Look at three people and tell them feelings, feelings, feelings. Yeah. Amen and amen. Songs of Solomon chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Songs of Solomon chapter 3. If you love the Lord, what will you do? You rise and seek Him. Like morning devotion. During week of intense glory. Some people, they never do morning devotion. Every time they wake up, you finish morning devotion. Some people, they will type, thank you, Father, and they will sleep. <laughs> Papa, we want you to do morning devotion. It is really helping us. As we are the best one, Wada. Why are you worrying my daughter, Dr. Yufua, or girl, the spirit? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Songs of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. <laughs> By night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loves. <laughs> On my bed, I sought him whom my soul loves. <laughs> I sought him, but I found him not. Verse 2, I will rise now and go about the city in the streets. It's, don't forget, it's in the night, like 1 a.m. He said, I will rise and go about the city in the streets. And in the broad ways, I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loves? Have you seen the one that my soul loves? Verse 4. It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loves. He said, When I decided not to give up and continue pursuing, it didn't take a long time. He said, And I found him. Oh my soul loves. I held him. I will not let him go. You see, those of you with passion, you are helping me preach. But those dignity, this is what you are you. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. I held him and will not let him go <laughs> until I had brought him into my mother's house. Mama, come and see my beloved. And into the chamber of hair that conceived me. Wow. I said, wow. Be seated, the praise of the Lord. By night, I sought him whom my soul loves. Listen, you always go seeking for the one you love. Huh? Ah. Normally when I'm praying in the night and I am in the prayer room, I'll see that mommy will open the door and come and check up on me. 
Hallelujah. So, so last. If you love the Lord, you will go after him. Yeah. When you love the Lord, eh? Please, sweetie is a lady pastor, so when you are talking, refer to her as such. Amen and amen. So long as one issue. That as I saw more DBs. Hallelujah. Pursuing love. When, when you see when you love the Lord, we see the way you pursue. Before service time, it's like you are here. It's like there's a pursuit. You see, you, you are pursuing. You are rising to seek. It's like you schedule your time. That I know I have to go to work by this time. But if I wake up by this time, I can pray and spend time with God. You rise and seek Him. If you are really extreme lovers of God, we cannot raise extreme lovers who don't have a private time with God. It, it's not possible. When the only prayer time you know, or the only word time you know, is when we come together as a church, you will never be an extreme lover. You should have a personal time where you rise, go past the watchmen, and if you can stretch a little, so you have seen your beloved and you hold him. Most pastors are not raising extreme levels of God because the only time or quality prayer time the members have is only when they are in corporate prayer. If you see any junior pastor who has come on social media to discredit the senior pastor, they don't have a personal prayer time. Ah, the Holy Ghost will not allow you to do such nonsense. The Holy Ghost will not let you do such nonsense. You see junior pastors who break away from senior pastors and all they are doing is I want to move the members of the senior pastor out of the church. Isn't that a Luciferian spirit? It is Lucifer that moved from heaven and wanted to move the angels of God with him. Move them out of heaven. If you have a personal time with God and if you are able to seek God by yourself, and you're able to have a personal study time, the Holy Ghost will never allow you to do that. Never. The Holy Ghost will correct you when you want to react. You say, hey, hey, no. My body is at stake. My body is at stake. My body, the body of Christ is at stake. Don't do that. Don't do it. Just go quietly. Go nicely. Don't disturb my body. Don't muddy the waters. Some people move, they are pastors. They move out of church and they call their church fake. And when you came to the church, you were a normal member. It was the church that called you a pastor. If the church is fake, aren't you also a fake pastor? Because the title came from the fake church. Please, am I communicating here? Yeah. Simply because many people don't love God. They don't have a personal time. They don't rise and seek God. Many people don't have a personal time with God. That's why they can mess up easily when nobody is there. They can mess up when they are among their friends who are unbelievers. They can betray God easily. Why? There's no personal conviction. So they cannot stand personally when nobody they know is there. I remember when you travel abroad, that's it. You will serve God again. Even simple university. If God takes you, your Christian life is going down. Simple university that all of us have gone and years have passed. And we went and served God. You can go there and your Christian life is spoiling. Simple university. Simple Togo. Simple Nigeria. Simple 7,000. When you get it, you think that you are on top of your game. Nobody should talk to you. You won't even pray. When you wake up, the first place you go to is where you have kept the 7,000. To check whether it is still there. When you get an iPhone, the whole night you won't sleep. And yet you have not said that I will not sleep because I want to spend time with God. 
You want to be an extreme lover of God. Extreme lovers of God, they rise in the night and they seek the one whom their soul loves. A personal time. They tell you, you're not praying with anybody. This is not this one praying with me. This one, no, 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 no. Personal time. Quality time. And you are pursuing. It's not that you are there now. Nah. There are people who say, I was there now nah, and God came. No. As the dear pants, you must be panting. There must be a pursuit. There must be a seeking. There must be an activity rising up to go and seek the one that you love. You rise up and seek your lover. You rise up and you are seeking. It's a great thing to have a lover that rises to seek you. And many marriages have even suffered because there's nobody pursuing. Many marriages have the statement, I'm available, I'm there. I will not say no, but if you want it, I'm there. You see, you may think that it is a wise thing, but it's one of the most foolish things. Because there's no pursuit. When there's love, there must be pursuit. Am I communicating here? I'm available. Do you want it? I'm available. I, I don't say no. I've not said no. I will not say no to him. But if you need me, I'm there. Hey. I'm available. <laughs> I'm there. I'm available. I never say no. These are common statements from those who are not in love. The love is going. It's, it's leaving. I may not initiate anything, but I'm there. I'm not pursuing you, but I'm there. Share. Pursue. If your wife is in the kitchen, pursue. If your husband is in the hall, pursue. Now let's move from marriage. If we are going to camp, we are doing church, we are doing building, we are do if you love God, you will pursue what he's pursuing. You must learn to pursue. I'm not teaching a marriage seminar, but learn to pursue. Learn to pursue God. No, some people, when God, when you become born again, they think that God will still be chasing them. God does not do that. After he has come, to, he has come down, what chasing is more than that? He came from heaven to earth. What chasing is more? He chased us and he first loved us. What must you do now? You must chase him. You must pursue him. You must seek him. That's why James told them, God said, draw near to me, pursue. And when you do that, I will also draw near to you. How close you are to God does not depend on God. It depends on you. So if you are going to erase extreme lovers of God, we must raise people who pursue God. Their Bibles have been well used. Their, their, their time is well spent in prayer. They can, they can go take time out and when they take leave, they, say they, are, they get one day. They say, I want to go somewhere to a retreat center and do a one day waiting on God. 24 hour prayer and fasting. That one is very intense and very nice. When you are there, you must be planning. When can I be alone? How can I be alone? Yeah. And I have come to visit me and they see that whilst you are talking, I'm not there again. Only mommy is there. Alone with God. Alone. It's a show. See, that's how God raises extreme lovers. People who can rise in the night and seek the one whom their soul loves. Not that Lord, God, I'm lying down. 
if you want to talk, I said, if you want me to pray, or if you want us to talk, come to me. If you want me to build a prayer life, God, you better come. But that's how many of us behave. We don't rise. We just love the sleep. But she said, in the night, I rose to seek the one whom my soul loves. If I can get you to have a quality personal time with God, I've been able to raise you as an extreme lover. Hey, please, listen. There's no extreme lover who will not love souls. I'm telling you, if you say that your zeal for souls are going down, I can tell you your prayer life is going down. I can tell you that your personal time with God is going down. I can tell you that when you come and you see me every time, I'm talking about souls, so this and I give you targets of what God is because of me talking, I'm talking to God. I'm pursuing God, and God is telling me what is on his heart. If you love the Lord, you will love him with your feelings. Your feelings will be involved. You won't be flat. Flat in emotions. When you are worshiping, you, you, you cry. You, you, you are, if you are not crying, your, your facial expression shows that you are singing to somebody you love. The love of your life. The one whom your soul loves. When you are coming to church, you will come in a certain way. When you are even calling others to church, you will do it in a certain way. Pray that God is going to be able to get your feelings. I said, I pray that God will be able to catch your feelings. I pray that God will be able to catch you in your feelings. Pray that your feelings will be after God. Lift your hands and begin to thank the Lord. Come on, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Spiritual, watch me. My joy, my peace of mind, my love, my life, my all. I'm excited, Lord. 